Welcome to ITU. At the ITU studio here this morning, we have Bilal Jamusi, who is the chief of the ITUT study groups department for ITU. Bilal, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for having me. I wanted to ask you uh, a little bit about uh, Fiji. Uh, what are some of the key aims of Fiji, and particularly this, this event, which is the Fiji Security Clinic. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about this. Sure. Uh, Fiji, of course, is the Financial Inclusion Global Initiative which is a partnership between the ITU, the World Bank, uh, the uh, Bank of Inter International Settlements, with uh, funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And as you mentioned, uh, p after the symposium uh, that was at the beginning of the year, now we're looking at uh, sharing them some of the output of one of the working groups of Fiji, which is the Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group. Uh, that has been working really hard on um, developing s reports that will aid uh, in the implementation of these uh, guidance and uh, principles uh, in a number of areas, uh, as you expect, in the security and trust uh, of the system. Uh, in particular, we're looking at the SS7 vulnerabilities. The SS7 is the protocol used to pretty much do all the signaling for the telephone network today, mobile and fixed and it's a protocol that was developed by the ITU many years ago. Uh, and it was developed in a context of trust where the operators, the telecom operators, are interconnected physically. Uh, when um, voice over IP came, voice over the internet protocol, and also voice over mobile networks uh, arrived, um, that basic assumption that all of the operators are interconnected in a physical a uh, fixed line with a trust um, uh, that is assumed, some of those assumptions are no longer there. And so uh, some vulnerabilities were introduced in the, in the, in the protocol, the SS7 protocol. Now, um, when the telephone network is being used for transacting money, uh, it's critical that uh, those vulnerabilities are addressed and um, you don't essentially lose your money by doing transactions. So uh, the um, Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group has been working on that area of uh, uh, mitigating these vulnerabilities. The report is ready, so they will be sharing it uh, uh, at the first, you know, the, the first day of the uh, clinic. Um, and then we also have been working on strong authentication, because uh, in order to transact money, we need to know or the bank or the, uh, the digital service provider, uh, financial service provider, needs to know who you are. Uh, with a very large degree of certainty. So the authentication is another area that uh, we will have a report on a strong authentication. Um, a new technology called blockchain or distributed ledger technology uh, is quite applicable in the domain of uh, financial services. So there is a report on uh, security of DLT. Um, and generally, when you introduce new areas of work in uh, digital financial services, the regulators want to have a level of assurance. So there is a, an assurance framework document uh, that would allow the, b both the telecom or the banking regulator to ensure that the services being offered in digital form, financial services in digital form, have a framework of assurance that, uh, that governs that. So those are the four main reports that will be uh, discussed uh, in the first day of the uh, symposium. Um, and the idea is to, to of the clinic uh, the Security and Infrastructure and Trust Clinic is, is ready to share this finding that was developed by experts in the field, including both uh, IT, ICT experts, and banking experts. Uh, and hopefully those reports will then be uh, used by the implementation countries. Uh, we have three main implementation countries in Fiji, uh, Egypt, Mexico, and China. Now, there's an urgent need for telecom and financial services regulators to collaborate to address uh, security in digital financial services uh, very much uh, as, as you have hinted here. Do you agree with this statement? Absolutely. Um, the biggest hurdle in accelerating the adoption of digital financial services is the fact that these services come at the intersection point of two regulatory authorities, the telecom regulator and the central banks or the financial regulator. Uh, the countries that have been able to have a collaborative approach for the regulation between the telecom and, and the banking have been able to uh, offer services quickly to their citizens. Um, and we use this forum uh, in the, uh, the Security Infrastructure and Trust and the whole uh, Fiji uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, partnership 
to provide a, a ground for dialogue and sharing between the uh, telecom and the financial service provider to allow the enabling environment uh, so that these services can be deployed at a, at a scale. Now you've got about 100 people yeah. turning up uh, for this uh, uh, security clinic. I wanted to ask you, perhaps looking back a little bit on this, uh, how has the whole uh, Financial Inclusion Global Initiative uh, been going? Uh, what, what has been the progress like uh, for it so far? Um, we are closing the gap. Uh, you know that uh, the premise of this work is that a few years ago we had uh, about 2.5 billion adults who were not banked and about 1.7 billion out of those uh, that had a mobile phone. And we started working with our partners to close that gap and try to use those um, mobile phones to provide financial inclusion. Uh, today, the numbers are uh, down in terms of the uh, unbanked population. It's about 1.7 billion or so unbanked, and 1.2 billion out of those unbanked have a mobile phone. So uh, these, this activity on providing the enabling environment, providing the technical solutions, um, working in the countries to implement this, uh, these uh, new techniques and ideas uh, is certainly uh, bearing fruit, and we are closing the gap in financial inclusion. And this, is, this, this security clinic is, is one of a number of uh, clinics of, of, that are taking part of the uh, initiative and, and, uh, and reporting upon it and, and, and dealing with that in, in, its, uh, in, in isolation, is that right? Indeed. We, we have the, the big milestone per year, which is the symposium. But in between the symposia, we have these clinics. We also have workshops in the countries, the implementation countries. Uh, in September, we had a workshop, for example, in Mexico where we, uh, you know, all the partners for Fiji discussed the progress of the country implementation uh, in Mexico. Uh, we also continue to have uh, in-country workshops in Egypt and in China. And uh, those are uh, big countries in ter terms of population where um, we can have a, l a big return on investment in terms of closing the gap on uh, financial inclusion. Now, security and data privacy are going to play a key role, obviously, in winning consumer confidence and catalyzing the adoption of fintech for financial inclusion. I wanted to uh, ask you a little bit about uh, your, your, your perception of this and, uh, and, and, and why that, that statement would be true. Um, for any consumer who used to transact in cash, uh, there was a certain privacy in the transaction um, and also a certain security that they, they had the cash in their hands and they can hand it to the merchant or uh, to someone that they needed to pay. Uh, when you move into the digital era and uh, digital domain, um, we need to provide the same level of trust and maybe a higher trust of the privacy of the transaction. So your data of the transaction needs to be protected. Um, the uh, banking sector um, is taking good care to make sure that that data is protected and that your transactions are, are uh, private to you. Um, and those are some of the elements of the data privacy that need to be in place. At the same time, when we move from the physical world to the digital world, um, and we see more and more financial providers providing uh, APIs or protocol interface to have applications on top, um, those APIs open a new attack surface. And we need to ensure that uh, those protocols are secure. And as we move to the digital platform, we continue to have strong security and strong privacy for the data of the, uh, of the user. And that brings trust to the user to move from traditional uh, cash transactions to the digital financial service. What do you hope will be the, the, the the final outcomes from from this security clinic here. I mean, apart from obviously presenting uh, the, uh, the 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 report so far and the work done so far, what do you hope will, will come from the from this uh, uh, feeding into perhaps a next year's symposium? Well, uh, one is to share the information of the reports because it was being worked by a small group of experts uh, in the working group. Now we would like to uh, make that uh, knowledge available broadly to the implementation countries primarily, but really broadly to any country uh, that is in the process of transforming from uh, physical money to digital money. Um, the second is through the clinics, uh, we, we want these experts to share experience. And we have uh, a diverse set of uh, participants. 
We have some uh, folks coming from the banking sector, some coming from the telecom uh, operator sector, some vendors, some cons consumer protection groups. So we want to make sure that the ecosystem has the latest technologies, has the latest information in order to uh, accelerate this financial inclusion globally. And you talked about uh, the uh, the aims of, of Fiji. You talked about digital financial inclusion, and obviously the figures are are going up. People are are, are accepting it more and more and adopting it more and more. But what do you think is going to be uh, the the catalyst? What do you think is going to be the most important uh, um, feature of uh, for digital financial inclusion that's going to encourage people to uh, to get involved and to to essentially become. Uh, digital as opposed to uh, physical? One word, trust. If the consumer or the user trusts that this new device and new solution um, will provide them the, uh, the service that they want uh, with the security and the privacy aspects and that they're not going to lose their money, um, then people will use it more and more. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.